Mr. Ed here. Today is November 8th, 2019, and it is a chilly morning. We've got a front coming through right now. Right now the temperature is right around 60, maybe about 56, something like that. But all through the day, it's going to be dropping throughout the day as that front moves through. And so that it's overcast right now. 20 minutes ago, we had winds 20, 25 miles an hour gusting out here. So that front's pushing through right now. And what I'm doing right here, all these boxes right here, this whole week, good time Charlie and I, we've been out visiting all the different yards. We've got seven, eight yards, and we're pulling in all of the third boxes that are on our, on our hives. Now, the reason I'm pulling in the third boxes is because going into winter time, I only run two deeps through the winter. That's all I want. I don't want to have any more boxes than two on the hive. And the reason I don't want any more than two boxes on the hive is because come January, when I do my rotations, in other words, in rotations, we're going to take our bottom box and move it to the top and our top to the bottom. And the reason we do that is because right now, most of our bees are going to be in that very bottom box. And in that second box is all their stores. And as, as Charlie and I were going through the box, through the hives, we, when we pull out the, pull off the top box, I'd always look into that second box. And 80% of those boxes had 10 frames of honey in them. So we're talking anywhere between 60 and 80 pounds of honey per box going through the winter. And that is for us down here, that's plenty. That's plenty of honey stores of honey for uh, the bees to get through. The other ones, uh, the other 20%, maybe not so much honey, but there was still honey up there. And then in those, the number of bees wasn't as great either. So they'll probably work, work itself out. Either way, it's going to work itself out because I'm not going to go feed bees all over our, our yards. For me, if the bees don't make it through the winter, yeah, I'm sad about it, but the whole idea of what, what I try to do is to have bees that are able to support, to survive over the winter and of course with uh, dealing with hive beetles and the mites. They have to be strong enough to do that. If not, well, I'm sorry, but we have some bees that will do that and that's, that's the bees that I want to propagate and to, to pass on those genetics to future generations. So what we're doing today, we got, I got Dr. Billy with me today. Good time, Charlie. He had to fly some people to the uh, for the Alabama game t uh, tomorrow night, so he's uh, he's working today. So he'll he'll be out of commission. But got Dr. Billy helping me, and we're going to be going back to our yards. We've got three more yards to pull uh, boxes from, and bring them back up up to here. So what I do, I mean the temperatures are dropping, and they're going to they our winter is almost really here. So once the winter comes and our temperatures drop. I'm not longer concerned, I'm no longer concerned with the hive uh, beetles or the moths because they're just like the bees, everybody is shutting down right now. So as, as everything is shutting down, I can come out here in this peacock pen, well it was the old peacock pen, and what I do is I take my, all my third boxes and I just line them up. I line them up so that they're exposed so the daylight still does pass through them, but they're all open. And as we're bringing them in, Two days ago, you should have seen that there were hundreds of bees in here cleaning out these boxes. Cause some, I had some honey in it that that uh, wasn't worthwhile for me to process, so I just left it out here. Our bees will get it; they can use it. But we had lots of bees in here today. It's a lot colder, and besides, the uh, the bees have robbed it all out. But that's what we I do is I bring the boxes in, and this is where I store them over the winter. You can store your hives, or I can store my hives, and I've been doing it for three years now. I store my honey boxes, my third deeps, outside, inside this caged opening right here. So it's caged so possums, raccoons, they can't get, get in here. So that's, that's really the biggest threat that I'm going to have to damaging my, my, my wax. As we have rats and, and they, they do damage it, but by opening the, the boxes like this, um, the, the rats, they may go in there, but they're not going to make a nest in there. Uh, they may damage it, but it's a minimal damage. But if you stack your boxes and you give them that dark space, they will move into it and they will make a nest in it. So by keeping them spread out open like this, I don't have that issue. 
and we'll be able to go through all winter with our hot boxes just sitting out here in this closed in area, got a roof over our heads, caged in all the way around, they're protected. So this is, this is my way of storing our boxes during the winter time. You can always leave the boxes on your hive if that's what you want, but I don't want to in the springtime when I go to do my rotation in the early uh, spring, you know, January for us, when I do my rotations, I do not want to have found that the queen moved up into my third box and started laying up there. And I have found that in years past. So my policy is come November, end of November, when our last nectar flow, which is the, the goldenrod, when it's over with, then I'm pulling in all my boxes, storm outside, and just let the cold air take care of everything. And that's generally the, 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 the procedure that I use. So today we'll probably have about 20 more boxes that we will need to pull in. And as I pull them in, if our boxes do contain enough honey for, for me to spin out, for, for me to take the, the trouble to use our machines to spin it out, I will. Right now I think I've got about, mm, I think about 16 or 18 boxes in the honey hut. And if I'm lucky, we may get another two more boxes. Now it's not complete full box of honey. It's missed matched and stuff, and there's misses, and it's not full frames of honey, but I think by the end of the time when I process that honey, I'll have somewhere between 20, maybe if I'm lucky, 30 gallons of honey, which for me is going to be great, because it's, it's a mix of honey. It's a mix from the spring, the tallow and the, go the, tallow and the privet, as well as the goldenrod. It'll be mixed in there, so it's going to be a great, great tasting honey. It'll be a lot darker looking than our spring honey, but it's also going to have a lot more body. So, Dr. Billy and I, we're going to head out right now. We're going to start the job, and then when we come back, or as we're out there, I'll, I'll shoot some video out there as well, showing you what we do. One thing that we, when uh, Good Time Charlie and I were doing it, there was several of the hives that just had a tremendous amount of hive beetles in it. And, and I know I did shoot one part of the video that, that'll be in this video where there were literally hundreds of beetles in, on the upper cover. But because the temperature was so cool, they were just like huddled up there, just slow moving. So they were easy, easy prey for our hive tools and we wiped them out. But we did, we did experience and see a lot of, of hive beetles. The bees push them up to the top and when you break that lid and you open up the little corrals that the, the bees have had them in, boo, they start running. Which is another reason why I don't go open up my hot bodies. Because when you pop that top, you break the, the seal, the, the beetles get out, the bees got to work more again to corral them. So I leave them alone. But at this time of year, I've got to go do it. So that's the, that's the choice that I have. So that's about all I've got for, your, for the introduction. I mean, we've probably got... 60 boxes in here, maybe even more, I don't really know. Um, and we'll have about another 20 more by the end of the day. So by the grace of God, Dr. Billy and I will finish up this job, get it in here. When we come back, I'll show you the, the stores, that, that we, the honey that we've got, and we'll be processing, processing that uh, sometime within the next week or so. Let's wrangle and get some boxes. I want to give a shot of what this peacock pin that I use for, to store my boxes in. I mean, this is, this is ideal. And it was right, it's, it's right next to the honey house. So for me to be able to move all our boxes into here, to store them in here, it's just such an ideal situation. And as you can see, there's hog wire all along this. So, I mean, big varmint, they can't get in here. Um, this was closed off with this fiberglass paneling on the ends because the peacocks used to stay at this end during the winter. But everything is closed off, and it is a really protected area. And as, as with the hog wire, the bees can still come in there and clean up all of our boxes. So now we're going to go ahead and take the lid off of this. We're going to find out if we got any beetles underneath this stuff or what condition. If maybe we can have honey. Well, uh, first thing you see is we got all the bees up here. so. There's a very good chance that we're going to have a lot of honey here. i got to go get the brush. Let me go get the brush. You know, let me, let me pop this whole box off. And I'm going to just move it onto our 
this thing in right here. It's not too heavy, so there's not a lot of honey in here. So the temperature right now is right around 54 degrees. The bees, they're going to start calming down, um, but they're not happy right now because I, I, I broke the top. Come look at this. I want to show you how much honey we have inside of this box. So as you look down into the frame, you can see the cap honey in this. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames of cap. And these two on the outside, they're not capped, but I see they're drawn out. These bees have a lot of honey in them. And there you go. Look at the beetles in here. So we're going to kill these guys right here. And this is what I was talking about earlier, that when the bees propolize this whole area, and they make these corrals. These are all corrals. And they will push the beetles into these corrals and then seal them off, and then they'll die. Well, as a beekeeper, if you come and pop your top and open it up, well, you free the beetles, which makes the, the, uh, the bees have to work to, to corral them up again. So to me, it's just not worth it to opening up these, these boxes. Remember, the whole idea of what we're doing today is we're taking our third box, taking it off the hive, and we're bringing it back up to the abbey. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to go frame by frame and knock the bees off. See, so we got some honey stored up in here. There's a beetle right here. So whoop, another one right here. And I don't want to put them back into the hive. These things are just bad. So what I'm going to do after I squish these beetles so we kill all our beetles. Now I can take these bees and bounce them into the well I'm not going to bounce them because there's too much honey in that. I'm just going to scrape them and they'll go back right onto the hive. Get to our next frame. Again, it's, it's uncapped honey. And you can see how much there is in there. But they have a lot of beetles on this thing. So I don't want to knock the beetles into our box. So we're going to go ahead and swim. See all the beetles? as it is and it's going to get, these beetles ain't going to make it. Okay. So I don't want to bring them back up to the attic here. So I'm going to knock the beetles off mm -hmm. right here. And then, we're fort unfortunately have to land on this top, then I'll squish it. Alright. So now, we got all the bees and the beetles off of our frame. We'll go do the next one now. So you see there's more honey on this one. Well, as cold as it is right now, these bees are just going to want to get into that box. So, so here we got some capped honey as well. These are some nice frames. They just never got around to capping this stuff, but I really think this stuff is honey in here. Again, some more capped on this side as well. Again, some more capped honey. I don't 
don't see any beetles, so we're going to just bounce these guys right into here. <laughs> All right, so we got all we got all our frames, knocked the bees off, got the beetles off of it, and we still have one cluster of, of bees in here that I'm just going to bounce in there. Check real quick to make sure I don't bounce any beetles into the hive. And you see, see the uh, cluster of bees right there. And we're just going to go ahead and bounce those right into our box. in here get them out we're done now I do want to check one thing I want to pull this outside frame and if it's light on honey I'll trade with with the other one but yeah, as you can see they're not liking me coming in here but I want to see how much honey is on this outside one oh I don't have to pull it out it's heavy so they've got they've got plenty of honey in here so we're gonna go ahead and Put our lid back on, give these girls back their heat. Put this on it. And then we're going to move on down to the next one. Well, the job here in this yard is done. We've got all our hives down to two boxes. And the one that's with three right there. And the one with three right there, unfortunately, are dead outs. So those, after I finish bringing all the boxes in, I'll come back and pull all of the dead outs and bring them back up to the Abbey. We'll clean those out. And then we'll get our final count of how many highs we're going to have going into the winter. Check this out, folks. Come to remove those third supers off the boxes. And when I'm here, Cheryl's sister comes over, man, I got a wasp nest. You think you can come knock it down for me? Look at the size of this. But I think these wasps are already gone because the, the nest is already starting to get tattered. But anyway, I'm going to knock it down and spray them and get rid of them for it. But I think they're already gone. Let's knock it down. Done. <laughs> so that's all that was left. Not oh, too much. Mm. All right, now let's finish up wrangling these bees and <laughs> get on home. All right, well, that's the last of them. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six boxes in here. And out of the six boxes, I bet you there's good three boxes 
of, of honey. So we're going to go ahead and grab all these boxes and back up to the Abbey and take care of the, the ones that don't have honey in it. The ones with honey, we'll put them in the hut. And then I'm going to show you a picture of some of those nice frames of honey that we got. So let's head up to the Abbey. So back at the honey house now, got all the boxes unloaded from the van. And all of these boxes right here are the boxes that contain frames that have honey in it. And it's not, there's uh, 20 boxes right here, but out of the 20 boxes, they're not full frames of honey. And some of them have just a little, some of them have a lot. Very mixed, but for me it's enough to run all of the stuff through our machines uh, and to get the honey out of it. I, I think that if I'm lucky, we'll probably get somewhere between 20, maybe 30 gallons if we're really lucky, get 30 gallons out of it. So it's enough to, like I said, run it through our machines, dirty up, and then clean them up as well. And the, the really the, the main reason I want to do is because I'm, I'm really interested in the mix of honey that's going to come from this with the golden rod as well as the, the tallow and the, and the privet from the springtime. And let me see if I can find the frame. I mean, they're not all full frames like this. You know, they're, it's, not, it's not all really great frames. They're nice. I'm going to get some honey out of them. But most, uh, most that's, that's a pretty good example. In fact, I'll use this one right here to show you the golden rod. So you can see at this point right here, these are, I'm getting real close to the camera so you really can see. This is my spring honey right here, all the white cappings right up in here. Now, if you look down in this area right here, you'll see where the cappings have a yellow tint to them. In fact, all of this drawn out comb has got that yellow tint. And that yellow tint signifies the goldenrod honey. So you'll see it, it's laced in between the spring honey. And there are a lot, there are a lot of frames like this in there. I don't have any frames that are solid goldenrod. I don't have any of those. And, and I don't have any that are solid tallow and privet. It's, they're all mixed. So it really should be a really interesting blend of honey for you. So I'll, I'll do the processing of this. I'll probably do this on Monday because I want to get, get all this stuff out of here and, and get these boxes underneath the peacock roof as well. So that, that's got to be done pretty quick. Plus, there were a lot of beetles. I managed to, to go through all this and get a lot of the beetles out, but I'm sure we missed a handful of them. So I want to make sure I get the, the beetles out. But being as cold as it is right now, we're in the, in the lower 50s right now, the temperature, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to really delay the, the laying of the eggs of beetles. They're, everything is shutting down right now. So that's about all I have for you. Oh, I do have one, one announcement. On December 5th through the 7th, the LBA, the Louisiana Bee Association Keepers, um, they're having their annual convention in Prairieville, Louisiana. And during that convention, I'll be up there as one of the speakers up there, but also the Dirt Roost is gonna be there too. Also, Shaw Wee will be there. In fact, I think they'd already talked about having us do like a round table, round robin talk, discussion up there. But for sure, I'll be up there talking about one of my favorite things, which is removals, cutouts. So I'll, I will be giving a talk on that. But for now, this little job is done. Our boxes are, are over in the peacock pen, and all I have to, left to do is spin this honey out. So until I spin out this honey, and now we'll make a, a video on that too. That's all I got for you. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Red, I'm out of here until the next video. All right, folks, it's November 1st, 2019. The temperature is about 40, 45 degrees right now. I want to show you what's under this lid. Look at the hive beetles here. All right, I'm fixing to have me a feast killing these things.
with the temperature so cold, the bees, healthy hives like this one, uh, they just force all the, the beetles up into where there's nothing, which is the lid. And they just keep them up here. And we're removing our boxes today, the third boxes. And so we, this is the second one we've discovered like this one with this many. It's a lot of hot beetles. You can see the bees coming out to corral them as Charlie is squish, squishing them. Squishing them. <laughs> squishing them. I mean, there were literally a hundred plus. Thousand. In, in, on this one. All right, I'm grabbing my tool. I'm gonna help him kill too. Nothing more satisfying than killing a hundred plus high beetles. <laughs> Check this out, folks. So look at this. Check this out, Mr. Ed, the snake hunter. <laughs> there you go. Well, That's a little look. chicken snake, a rat snake. He was sleeping. Yeah. So. Oh, you're choking him. Don't choke him. We're gonna we're gonna just turn this guy loose back here. Oh, absolutely. Nice, nice. Stand back, we want everybody to be able to see. Stand back, stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Come on, everybody, come over. Come on over, come on. I want y'all over here. Over here, come on, come on, come on around. All right, so, y'all, I told y'all that, that I have, I have a box of bee box with no bees. I did bring a box with bees, but it's what they call an observation hive. An observation hive is a hive where bees cannot come out. There's a piece of plexiglass. I just need that a little bit. So, so the bees can't come out. So when I open this, there's a piece of plexiglass underneath, underneath the lid, and when when I open it, then you'll be able to see the bees. Y'all ready to see some bees? Yeah. <laughs> 